Hello everyone, I am JCRP and you are watching Kalakar Makerspace videos. In this video, we are going to restore this old injection molding machine. This is something that I wanted for a very long time. I am glad that I found this one and it was gifted to me by one of my friend. He runs an injection molding place but he has gone very far ahead in this business and he had some hydraulic machines. So this one is actually hand cranked one and he didn't need it anymore so he gave it to me. For 3 years now, I have been using 3D print and it has been wonderful. But if you need to scale up and get multiple prints, then you need an injection molding molding machine. I know it's a hand cranked one, it's going to be slow but I think it's a good start. But first, I need to fix this machine, I need to get it up and running. There are a few parts missing, it's a little bit rusty. So first I'll go ahead and clean the parts, buy the materials which are required. This will be a great video for you if you're interested in knowing how injection molding machine works and it's going to be a really good lesson for me as well. So let's get started. The bearing here seems to be really greased up and in good condition, so I am not going to touch this. Maybe I will just apply a little bit of oil, but for now I will just close it back again. Here are all the parts taken out from the main machine and I will clean one after the other right now.
Before painting, I ground off all the rust away, then I cleaned it with some thinner. Then I was able to paint it with red oxide that will protect the metal for a very long time. And then I used Asian Paints satin color. Now satin is actually a oil based color, but it gives a bit of a matte look. It's a semi matte finish, which I really love about satin finish. And I use that for the entire mission. Here I've used red satin and here the black satin and with the semi matte finish it looks really great. After painting I let this dry about for 2 days because I gave a really thick coat. Now I can go ahead and assemble the parts but first I want to show you what new additions I've added to the parts, the electronics part of it, everything. So let's go ahead take a closer look. This is the thermistor that I'm going to use to heat the cylinder. This is the cylinder in which the material will go and this is what I'm going to heat. And to heat that, there are two coils. So this one is a larger one and it is about 80 watts. So this goes over here in this area to heat up the entire material. And the shorter one comes over here to heat up the nozzle. So actually both are required because the material will be here and then when it is extruded, the temperature has to be maintained even. And this thermistor is a variable one. So right now it's in off position. And as I turn, you can see it switches on and as I increase the temperature, these heating filaments get heated up really, really quick. So make sure that you don't touch it, even if it is on for just a couple of seconds. Here we have a simple fuse and uh, here is that. On the side, there is a huge 15 amp plug, which is connected to both the heating elements. Here is the input, which is connected to the main supply. Now I can show you the other hardware parts. This is the old shaft that I showed you at the beginning of the video. And here is the new one. And obviously, if you can see the entire length, a major portion is actually missing. And this shaft here is a little bit thicker, which gives a really piston kind of a feel when it goes inside the cylinder. So the outer diameter and the inner diameter of the cylinder has to be really perfect and somehow this piece has been cut off and so I bought this new piece and because this is a moving part I grease them really well and this is going to be threaded rod that holds the mold together while this actually pushes the material in so both have been greased now I can go ahead and quickly assemble everything together and then put the electronics on it Let's talk about the cylinder a little bit because this is the important part in which the material is there which gets heated up and then pushed out. So this is what we call as nozzle and this type of a cylinder is called as a nylon cylinder which means that you can even inject nylon material through it. So let's remove the nozzle and see what's so special about this nozzle. That was close. So when you buy a nozzle you can see that this kind of moves. This is really necessary because if you see the gravity does its work by pulling the nozzle again back. Let me pour a little bit of water to show you what happens. The water doesn't come through and that's a good test for how a nozzle has to be. So if I take the cylinder out, you can see the water comes out and then if I leave it, again it stops. This is very important otherwise if there is any leakage then when the filament is totally hot then dripping happens and if your nozzle is tight like this then there is no drip that will happen in the material so just make sure when you buy it make sure that you do this test to see if your nozzle is good. This cylinder does not come in a standard size. What I mean by that is this shaft is never the same so make sure that you take this part and take it to a lathe guy who will actually take some material off so that it becomes a snug fit. So the way the assembly goes is first this part goes in, then the spring comes up top and then finally the hopper goes on the top.
it took me some research and a lot of running here and there asking a lot of people about advice to understand how this mission works mainly it was because it is not a streamlined mission meaning not all the parts are standard so that took some time to understand what i should do to get this working but i'm finally happy that it is working and i can make my own mold i already have a design in mind and i have actually put the design on easel also so all i have to do is mill the design in my cnc mission and then i can do some test prints i'm going to use aluminium but usually people use ms as well if you have learned something from this video then please do let me know in the comments or if you know something more about this mission then do tell me also facebook will be the best place to reach me and if you haven't please subscribe to this channel and also to know what i'm working on right now please follow me on instagram i post almost every day if you found this video helpful do consider contributing on patreon it really helps me a lot i hope to see you next time in another video so until next time happy learning